Just like in high-speed chases, sometimes you feel like you blaze through the product at top speed. But occasionally, it feels like you're stuck in the traffic and that you are barely making a dent. Hi, welcome to the Art Hub, a place where we welcome any type of update, whether you're smashing your goals at the top speed or you're slowly approaching them. I'm going to walk you through the products just in the order that I apply them. We are kicking things off with some good news. As I have anticipated, I did finish Sephora Mattifying Super Hydrant Moisturizer Cream. It took me 8 uses to squeeze this bad boy out, and to tell the truth, I haven't seen a great mattifying effect, so I'm not gonna repurchase it. With that being said, now I am in a dire need to find some good mattifying primer. So if you know any, please let me know in the comment section below. Up next, we got L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hours Fresh Foundation in the shade 415. After 9 application, I used this much of the foundation. And if you ask me, I would say that's a little bit too much for such a short period of time. This is likely due to very runny consistency of this foundation. Coupled with the fact that I applied it with a sponge, which tends to soak up a lot of product, I believe those two factors led to overconsumption of this foundation. Moreover, eventually I did figure out how to apply this foundation so it looks okay for me, it doesn't sit on my pores, it doesn't look dry or cakey. First of all, I have to make sure that my face is super hydrated. And secondly, I try not to drag the sponge too much, but instead buff the foundation in. So I do not disrupt it and it looks even all over my face. One more disadvantage of this foundation, as for me, is the combination of foundation consistency and the packaging. Since it is so liquidy, instead of squirting the product on the palette by pressing a pump, I have it leaking under the opening and along the head. I hope I will manage to finish this foundation by our next update. Rolling out with the concealers. As I've mentioned in this video, where you can also find much more details on the products I'm planning to pen and set different goals of usage, I am left with only one concealer, which I actually plan to use naturally, so there is no need to put it in project pen. Instead, I want to get the maximum usage of this hard candy glamouflage concealer aka white paint which I generally use to mix up with my foundation to brighten my under eye or maybe this and this areas. So here is the pickle. Either I misplaced the mark the last time or this is a concealed dark horse of my project pen products because the marking hasn't dropped even a little even though I used this product at least five times. So now I'm actually a little bit concerned. Moving on to blushes. This is my first time to pen a blush, especially such an OG product of beauty industry as NARS Orgasm. I know it is one of the hardest categories to pen, and now I see why. Seven uses just lightly scraped the surface of the product. So I am profoundly stunned and unable to anticipate how many more uses I need to hit a pen. That's my goal for the product. I don't even plan to finish it within a year because I know it's practically impossible. Have you ever tried panning NARS Orgasm Mini? If yes, can you give me a guesstimate of how much it takes to hit the bottom? I would really appreciate that. Iconic London Precision Duo Contour Pot. As far as I remember, I used the powder part at least twice and the cream part six times. I didn't apply it directly with the brush, I had to be a little bit more creative. The formula is too emollient, it doesn't have the grip to stay when blended. Instead, if I mix it with my foundation, it sticks and blends nicely. Therefore, in order to get the product, I have to scoop it with a spatula. It's a little bit tedious, but hey, at least it works somehow. The first lesson that I learned during my project panning last year is that Powders takes longer to use, especially the loose ones. I set my whole face with this powder at least 7 times, and the marker is just slightly below. 
I'm not even sure how much usage I will get by our next update. I think that the marker will not move at all. On top of that, it is okay powder. My hand is not reaching for it all the time. Though, I learned one trick from Morgan Turner. She shared about wet puff and the powder. And if it is as blurring as she says, I will let you know. And maybe it will help you to get much more use out of this powder. Moving on to eyes. I introduced two liquid eyeshadows. The first one is this Revolution Green Multichrome in the shade Chameleon. In this video, I share how I apply this eyeshadow and make it stick to my oily, slightly hooded lids and make at least four hours of wear out of it. Unfortunately, I wore it just once, but nevertheless, I enjoyed the look a lot. I bet I will get much more usage out of it as an eyeliner and I'm genuinely looking forward to it. On the other hand, this is Heart Candy Eye Def and it goes against everything I've just said. It is so cakey that I cannot wear it longer than 10 minutes. Maybe the product has gone bad. Because when I applied it previously, it was fine. Whenever I used a very thin layer, I got at least two hours of use out of it. But now it doesn't want to cooperate with my eyelids at all. So unfortunately, I have no other choice but to declutter it because for the God's sake, I cannot make this product work. Now regarding my eye pencil predictions. I did manage to finish this unknown one. It took me at least 10 uses to even out the surface. And you know what? I have to figure out what was that because it glided smoothly on my lids, even though it is very, very, very old. And somehow it worked better than my brown Colourpop one, which tags my lids whenever I use it as a wing eyeliner or I want to build the shape of my eye look. It works pretty well if I apply it in my waterline. Not the best, but okay. Do you know, are there any other ways to revive the smoothness of this pencil? Because I know it used to be smooth. Since I have one more eye pencil from Colourpop, it is a turquoise. Give me a second. Yeah. This one is from the same batch and it is as smooth as butter. So what do you think? Is it a matter of color or maybe formulation? Or maybe I shouldn't put so much effort into that because I'm left with just a little bit of it and I hope if I use it exclusively in waterline, I will be done with it by the end of summer or maybe by our next update. It seems to me that I'm very optimistic with my predictions. I believe that I would use up this Colourpop Get Lose It, I think the name is. It is pinky gold metallic eyeliner. But since I was trying so hard to make the hard candy one work, I neglected this one completely. Almost completely. I ended up using it at least three times, which is too little to see any change. But since I decided to declutter the one from Hard Candy, this one will get much more love from me, especially if, since it is very good for one and done look. I am both happy and sad to tell you that my Maybelline Cream Eyeshadow Color Tattoo in the shade Cream de Rose is finally done. And yesterday I was looking into Maybelline Gondola in my local Walmart and I couldn't find cream eyeshadows there. I hope Maybelline is not discontinuing this product because it is a treasure. I mainly used it as a base for my eyeshadows and it made them last through the whole night. I definitely have repurchased this product at least once. This is how much I like it and I'm going to look for it and hunt for it. This is not a good base if you plan to blend a lot, but in case you're looking for one shadow look that should stay put from dusk till dawn, this is what you're going for. This is a glass packaging and I'm already repurposing it for my blush and if you're interested in what kind of blush I'm mixing for myself, you can check it out in this video. Now I can officially peel off the sticker and redecorate it. Yay. 
So far, I had a very good progress with my eyeshadows. Every update, I either hit a pan or even finish the whole eyeshadow. But this update will be mainly about expansion. I focused mainly on tempera and warm taupe. I used each of them at least 14 times. In tempera, I did manage to clear, almost clear, the side, but still there is a tiny bitsy amount of product at the top corner. And the same is true for warm taupe. I almost, almost hit the side pan. And also the same is true about golden ochre. Seven uses and almost almost broke to the border. So you can see that the word of this update is almost. I thought I would have raw sienna finished, but nine uses did not make the product disappear. I just extended the pen. You might also notice some progress in Regal, but I mainly scrape it to use it as my blush, liquid blush. So this much product lasted me through two batches of my blush, which lasted me almost four months. Somehow I thought that reinventing is at my blush will speed up the progress. But I think I need still to use it more as an eyeshadow because product-wise it is, I think, the second most full pen in my eyeshadow palette. I used Vermeer at least 14 times. And usually I use it as my highlighter. I even had to repress it to make sure that whenever I get my fan highlighting brush into it, I still get some product. But it is still going strong. Speaking about repressing, I want to repress my tempera, uh, rosiana and warm taupe to make it easier to pick the product. What do you think? Should I do that or maybe the look of pan is too tempting to get rid of, maybe covering it will be a sin. What do you think? Red ochre and love letter are getting flatter around the pen. I used love letter nine times and red ochre at least three. And the same can be said about Venetian red. As I mentioned before, this kind of pinks are lacking a little bit depth for me, so I struggle to where actually place it in my makeup routine. So far, they are the hardest for me to use. I'm thinking maybe to look for some makeup looks where the artist used a lot of pinks so I can incorporate them in my everyday life. I think I will let you know how it goes in the next update. Buen Fresco is definitely getting thinner. Nine uses in Companion with Colourpop Glass Bull did it a lot of justice. This look is so easy for me to throw on. I wish all pinks were like that. Four times, Cypress Umber was my eyeliner. It actually works very well with my Colourpop Brown pencil. Whenever I use that pencil and it skips or leaves blank space or it tags my skin, I pat Cypress Umber over it and I have pretty nice sharp look. And Burnt Orange. Burnt Orange is too orange for me. I think when I finish Rossiana, I will repress it with some green so I can neutralize that orangeness and it will serve me great as a good bronzer for my light skin. So burnt orange will just have to wait till that time. In the place of antique bronze, I put a little bit of dark brown from um, Pat McGrath's Mothership 3. I hope it will encourage me to use even more of Cypress Umber. But instead, I used a lot of dark brown, but a little of Cypress Umber. So my piece of advice for you. If you are planning to add a companion eyeshadow, do it more mindfully. As I mentioned in the introduction video, I want to finish this palette by the end of the summer. It was a bold ambition, but it was driven by relatively good progress I had so far. But this update showed me that it might not be feasible. I will try to push myself and use this palette at every opportunity I have. Do you think is it possible? Or we will see it by the, our next update or by the end of the summer. The last product I want to mention is Sephora Cream Lipstick in the red shade. I use it just five times and I enjoy it thoroughly. I don't see the way how I can track the progress because the packaging is not transparent and even if I light it through with my flashlight, I don't see where to put the mark. So let's see what I'm going to roll in instead of the project I finished or decluttered. 
The first category was uh, cream and liquid eyeshadows. I'm definitely looking for something like this Maybelline color tattoo. If you know anything similar, please let me know in the comment section below. And this liquid eyeshadow. You know, now when I'm thinking about it, I cannot think of any liquid eyeshadow that actually worked for me. This revolution is the exception. They do not stay put on my lids. They, I always have to make sure that I have a special routine whenever I place them. I want my makeup routine was more streamlined. So I think this category will stop existing in my makeup collection because I do not see the practical application or ease of use. Regarding primers, I do have this Uriage, I think this is how you say it, mattifying emulsion, and I will try using it as a primer and see if it works or if it makes any difference. I hope to use it at least 10 times, so I will see how it works. And one more thing that I finished was the brown unknown eye pencil. I want to go through my eye pencil collection because it is actually getting old. So let me think what I want to add. Ooh, I do know. This is Wet n Wild Lightly Blue Pencil and this one is from Hard Candy. I want to finish the Wet n Wild, but why do I put two of them? Because as I once told you, some products work better in pairs. I like the color of this eye pencil, but its longevity is like 5 seconds. This one, I don't love the color, but it stays strong in my waterline. So I thought, why not to combine them? I will use this one as a base and top it with this one. My plan is to finish the one from Wet n Wild. And I think it's pretty durable because I love having a blue waterline. Actually, I'm very happy to have blue in my everyday routine. What about you? Are you doing any project planning? If yes, I will cheer for you. You're doing great job. Doesn't matter what kind of progress it is. Thank you so much for staying with me today. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, sticker, sticker, stickers. Which sticker should I put here?